Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Lisa from Adventures in Agriculture and welcoming you back to the channel after a little bit of a, a break. And here I am back with Andrea Donnelly and we are going through the next steps on what's happening on the agricultural project that we've been working on together in collaboration in uh, Puglia, Italy. Um, Andrea, welcome back to the channel. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Lisa. It's always a pleasure. And uh, goodbye, ciao to everybody. Uh, <laughs> ciao, everybody. Yeah, I'd love I'd love to introduce it. So um, as you may remember, Andrea did some work, work with us um, in the fall when we were doing the first phase of implementing electroculture into the property in Puglia. This, uh, the, and Andrea will go through the, the, a little bit about that, but Andrea, this is very exciting because as we've worked together and you had a chance to come onto the property, we were able then to really identify what the key issues are in this region um, as it relates to agriculture. And I think the two things are, number one, the quality of the soil because it is the agricultural heartland of Italy and it and, and it has been used and overused and over chemically processed. So we have issues on bringing the soil back to life. And then we also are finding that the water is also subject to those same um, externalities and implications of that. So um, from that, I think we've been able to refine the project. And Andrea, I think you're gonna start off by going over what the project was so we, everybody is aware of what it is and you'll go through the presentation that you have for us. So can absolutely. I hand it over to you now? Yeah, absolutely. So you're right. We. We want to work uh, really well with the soil. We want to work really well with the water. These are important, very, very important, not, not only for the plants, but um, even for us. So we did the first uh, workshop uh, in October together with a good team that uh, helped. And we, we did the presentation, we did the training, we did the practical, a lot of practical. And uh, there were a big surprise. <laughs> uh, so we we did the Meniere installation. We, we I teach a little bit of geobiology, so everybody was confident to feel the energy, to feel the water, and um, it was very fun. We identified the place, put the manure, and to start the agopuncture of the herds, and mm -hmm. this was in combination for a new plantation. So it was a great day because uh, more than 100 trees arrived in the property. Uh, it right. was a, a big, massive uh, team working. Uh, that we had a lot of fun and uh, always a pleasure to, to put in place new life, uh, to start mm. the transformation, to have a good feeling with all the team, the plants, and, and we used uh, the electroculture approach, the energetic agriculture approach. So we work with uh, identifying the best place for every plant and uh, identify the best orientation because plants are born uh, maybe in a place with a certain orientation and we want to put again the plants in the same place. Uh, we added the geotherapy, the rock, uh, we added the uh, other things to to create the best uh, opportunity for the plant to go back uh, in the primordial uh, energy. Uh, we will see the grow step by step. More than 150 trees arrived uh, that day. So, uh, Very exciting. <laughs> uh, yeah, all the week uh, was spent to 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 start. Uh, is a new seedling eh? in Anteros. Is a big uh, boom of new plants. Yeah, we were looking for uh, water as well with this uh, technology that helps. Uh, and we identify uh, some places for upper water and deep water. Uh, still, we have a lot of uh, uh, yeah. funny thing to to know about that. Uh, uh, what is the stage, uh, Lisa, for for that? Yeah, so we've um we've been trying to understand whether or not we have the concept of primary water. And in, at this stage, we're just finding the right people to do 
second well. And what we have to do is go slowly, slowly on the excavation because the region has some um, reg restrictions on how deep you can go and dig for the water. So we're at that stage, we're just about to go dig into the second well with the guy um, who's an expert in water for the region. Um, and Andrea, maybe we could you could just give us a little bit of feedback because as you looked for the water on the, on the land, you saw two layers of water Water, right, you saw one at what is it, a hundred or one hundred and twenty meters, and then another at two hundred and seventy meters. Could we yeah. determine whether one of them was primary water, or or how? What's the difference between primary water and just deep seated water on the land? Okay, so we got in this point, point number four, we got uh, I can call uh, surface water. Right? It's thirty, sixty meter uh, deep. It is I we can call surface water like the I believe the present uh, well is collecting the surface water and then uh, very deep uh, we have another uh, line of water and this uh, still we don't know if it is uh, salt or it is a primary water or a very very deep water that's the case uh, for sure um, right. and uh, the primary water. According to the, the study that we share together, it's a very um, structured water, plenty of energy, and it's typically um, mounting up uh, through uh, cracks uh, in the rocks. And these rocks are um, um, volcanic rocks, uh, like basalt, granite, uh, but mainly basalt. And, uh, and there are also fixture and uh, very special energies that dynamize the water. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure, I'm not sure, because honestly, we can discover only when we find uh, the water and right. we make the analysis. Yeah. And um, there is no experience in your place about this primary water, but we never know. Eh? So we are free to explore. Right. And uh, maybe we make a new discovery. So we need to be open. And this is, right. And this is the important thing, because what we're trying to achieve here is identifying it and exploring for it. Because every and this is what I think other people will run into and important to share is that as you go through using these new techniques or old techniques coming back into our, our mindset is that people do not have experience with them and they do not want to do them and they don't want to believe that something is different and against the narrative of what they've normally done. I've been lucky to identify, as you know, a team of people who are interested in exploring the new and have been researching this and on that and that same um, mindset. But right now, it's slowly, slowly moving them along in that direction. So you're correct that we have to get the water and um, and and then test it. But as you mentioned, and I would love to ask this question. You're saying that primary water goes through rocks that are energized in the basalt, which basalt seems to be a core construct in electroculture. I'm wondering if it's not primary water, could we add those energies in through integration of different of those rocks in the basalt and the energy as we move it up through the system to make this turn into Yes, absolutely. Water. Yes, absolutely. We can recreate uh, like a tank uh, with basalt inside, for instance. So right. um, the, the, if we don't have uh, the right uh, primary water, we can we can work on the water and yeah. eh? we can monetize yeah. the water. We can uh, inform, we put information in the water in many ways. Eh? And this is what we will do uh, apart in the next wave. Uh, we we work uh, on the water for for the farm for the house for the swimming pool and this is very important um, we can work uh, on the filtration we can work in the movement of the water because that is very important to move continuously the water eh? stagnant water it's uh, it's bad <laughs> like every every energy should move in general it's i can say this is a rule energy moves eh? everything is movement is good right. if it's stagnant is uh, blocked uh, is not good eh? 
Uh, right. So we, we can work in the movement of the water in the filtration and adding the right energy through the, the pipe system, for instance. This is what we will do. And if we are lucky that we have the primary water, this will be better and better and better. But right. in, any, in, any <laughs> case, in any case, we can do it in every place. Uh, we can uh, play with other techniques and tactics uh, like the, the um, biodiversity in the garden, mulching, right. uh, leaving mulching to preserve the water, collecting the water from the roof. So we have many techniques that we can combine always to have uh, a, a very good availability of water that is so important. Exactly. And this is important now because as that, um, as we know, the project is a combination of a masseria and agricultural lands. And this was an existing property and we're renovating it, bringing it back to life. And we're implementing the water systems and the piping on there. And what's been a very interesting and eye-opening process for me is that how the materials that are used for building are still these plastics. Everything is plastic and we have to figure out ways to balance out those energies and the negative impacts of these plastic piping. So I'm very excited that we're doing this and I know that. And just to make a note for people who are listening to know that when you think of these concepts and it sounds, of course, we're gonna, you know, we can do that. You will run into um, uh, people who are going to say, no, that's not possible. And you just gently say, no, I see that this is being done. We can do this. And, and, and it's important to know that we are on the forefront of doing things in a different way, in a very positive way. And most people then look at you and they're like, oh, okay, this is good. So stand strong and go for it <laughs> is what I'm exactly. trying to say. Exactly. So we explore multiple choice and we we yeah. select the, the one <laughs> that resonates. But it's also, it's also interesting because one of the things Andreas will go through is that um, for this next phase of the water, putting tanks in. One of the things here is that they want to use plastic tanks and I'm looking at cement, but I love this idea of covering it with basalt. So we have to figure out some way, some unique way, and we'll, we'll, we'll share that together as we, we create together. Yeah. Absolutely. And coming back to primary water, the studies available are, are mainly in Colorado. So the experience is through the Colorado um, drilling, finding, and over there, there is plenty of basalt. And that's, that's why I'm, mm -hmm. I'm touching this uh, important topic. Uh, but we can bring the basalt and make it uh, our way in your place. Huh? So right. Right, that's right, what right. we can do. Okay, Perfect. so going Fine. back, going to the project, we did also the olive uh, plantation uh, installation with Chiara over there. Mm -hmm. So we have a test uh, in place. Uh, um, that's very important because olives are the plants uh, from Puglia. Uh, so we want to showcase uh, what's happened. And uh, the project started uh, with the installation of four uh, towers and we cover the north uh, the north part uh, where the plantation the new plantation are happening and also the the serra the greenhouse will come etc and now we we are in the step uh, to to plan the next uh, wave so wave two will be in uh, at the beginning of march and the mm -hmm. focus is around water so all the activity will be around water our how we can energize the water, bring uh, information for structured water, for agriculture, house, and swimming pool. Uh, because you know, when, when you use the water, it's not only important uh, for the plants, it's important for your skin. When you take a shower, you got in the swimming pool. When you right. clean, when you clean uh, the vegetables, the fruits, otherwise. If the water is polluted, you hit uh, very bad things. Eh? We focus in organic production of food, but if you use a bad water, you destroy all your activities. So it's very important to have a, a very clean water, but energized water as well. Then we complete um, the installation uh, with the manures uh, to cover 100% of the property. 
and um, and we will do a, a deep dive on pyramid. Uh, we do a deep dive on pyramid uh, because there are more things to explain, even new shape, uh, new material uh, to test. Uh, Okay, coverage 100%. Uh, um, another technique is the flow form technique. I really love is the movement uh, for the water. So once you have collected the water, you stock the water, you can add filtration and then you can move the water to increase the energy, to change the pH, to mm -hmm. even to, to improve the, the quality of the water. Uh, and right. this these studies are very intriguing uh, and I really love this shape uh, of flow forms. So we try to see. If we can that. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's interesting. So what are the materials that are normally used for these flow forms? Is it ceramic itself or is it another type of material? Yeah, there are always natural materials like um, terracotta, for instance, in the left, you see the pictures. Mm -hmm. So it's very natural. Then this is a kind of granite. Uh, or you can use granite or mm -hmm. even basalt. And uh, now <laughs> we are thinking to make our own shape in basalt. And even yeah. other researcher, the they so there are available different stones, and we can make a different shape and different uh, uh, configuration of stones. But always natural more natural it is better it is uh, uh, mm -hmm. no plastic <laughs> well, this is this is so important because you know you realize as you do these projects andrea that the world is just everything is using plastic i was even told as i'm implementing the electrical systems they're like you can't use copper wiring you have to use plastics because of how things work. And you're like, wow, nobody wants to use anything other than plastic. It's fascinating. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's cheaper. It's uh, very easy to transport it. And, uh, but it really is a microfiber of plastic. So at the end of the day, if you don't have a good filtration, you drink it. Plastics. And, and, and this is very important because not only that, is that they're selling me the life expectancy of a plastic wiring system is forever, unlike a metal one, which has a 10 to 20 year life expectancy. And then you think, ah, do you ever really get rid of plastic from nature and from your body? Just mm -hmm. a thought. Right. <laughs> it's right. like they're right. trying to tell me that that's a really good thing. And I'm like, maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> uh, these ceramics uh, or, or stones are forever. Eh? Like uh, the manure we have put it in place. These are forever for all the generation that right. we come. Uh, it's a really uh, installation forever. And then we, I want to go deeper in this topic because there are a lot of details I can show, I can explain. And we do funny things uh, like wine tasting, oil tasting, to understand how the frequency can change the material world in terms of sound, smell uh, and flavors. So we need to work in our sense. Eh? We have five senses. Uh, we need to go back uh, with our sensibility to understand the importance of frequency, natural frequency. Yeah, exactly, which is very exciting. Great. And when this time we have the gold uh, to try, uh, not only bronze, copper, uh, we have the gold. Mm. Uh, well, what, what, are you, what are you thinking will be the difference with the gold versus bronze or, or other materials? Uh, it's a surprise. You need to try. We take a good right. bottle of wine okay. and we taste it. <laughs> okay. I like this. I like this. That's very good. I love this. You know, Puglia is a very good region for wine. So we're only doing this for, for absolutely for scientific purposes. Right, Andrea? Yeah. At the end of the day. <laughs> at the end of the day, not at the beginning. Always exactly. at the end. <laughs> It's part of the research. Very fun. It, you know, it's very intense research. <laughs> yes, we love it. Is. Yeah. And then we work on a new approach uh, um, for grounding that is uh, very important. So 
Uh, it's um, in every house, we need to ground uh, the electrical stuff uh, in the earth, like in this uh, small design. Huh? And uh, electrons are all around the surface of the, the earth, and we need to put uh, the, the grounding system. So for the villa, we want to do something special, of course. We want to create uh, a kind of Lakowski ring uh, with the copper that is uh, taking uh, the energy and concentrating the energy all around the, the property of the villa or the villa house, the main uh, building. And then the grounding will be connected to this uh, ring. Eh? Um, this is very exciting because I, 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 you know, had started off by putting these grounding wires in, which of course was another very different concept. But for for those who are doing the house, so it's an old home, you know, reconstruction of something that was an existing piece of property, and the those who are working there, they're like. What are you doing? And, and you know, we, we were talking about the orientation with the magnets, and this was so different for everybody. But for once again, they're like, okay. And and it's this seeding the concept in the mind of a few. And then every person that we seed with that concept, it grows from their experience and everybody that they touch. So I think this is to me one of the most exciting things to do because I think it's simple, but enormously impactful enormously absolutely and then we can have multiple uh, benefits with the grounding like uh, this is a earthing effect with a reduction of inflammation it's uh, before okay you see on the right the picture there is a very inflamed body lamb and then just after 30 minutes of connection with the soil without the shoes, eh? no plastic shoes. You remember the test, do you? Mm. I, rem I remember the test very well. This was so this was so interesting, is that this connection to the energies of the earth, it's just magical. It's exactly what we need to do. And what yeah. we remove ourselves from in cities and with our clothing. Exactly, and then there are effects even in the cortisol, okay? So normally the cortisol, uh, it's, um, it's moving up and down um, in the day. So this is the, the curve that is normal. But we, we test some people with pre-earthing check, okay? So 24-hour profile pre-earthing. And then after the earthing, uh, you see the, the curve. Mm -hmm. The stress is is going down, and this is another positive effect uh, for our life. So we have uh, the possibility to create houses that make a grounding, and even when we sleep, we can ground our bed, and we can have a better sleep, of course, <laughs> as a consequence. Mm. This earthing, it's working as well with the free radicals that are so important for us. And um, and usually the effect is a reduction of inflammation. Huh? So yeah. you you can have a lot of benefits to, to reduce the inflammation in your body thanks to this technique. Huh? Yeah. It's if you very... want, yeah, yeah, excuse me. No, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, if you want to go deeper, I suggest uh, to have a look at this book, Earthing, the most important health discovery ever. Again, we work uh, with shoes of plastic. We need to go barefoot. <laughs> and in Puglia, it's fantastic because we have great weather all the year. So people can, can even experiment this experience. And uh, in this book, there are a lot of uh, real cases even blood test, multiple people, um, big panel of people tested. And the, the results are so nice, like the, the was reduced the, the loss of calcium, uh, calcium ions and uh, phosphor. So this is improving the problem of osteoporosis. I mean, you have benefit, no more osteoporosis stronger like before. Uh, it improves electrolyte concentration, 
thyroid hormone will be will be balanced, will be in harmony, and also the glucose production has been tested in in uh, diabetics people, and this is managed uh, properly with a reduction of 30 percent eh? yeah. and even the immune system is is better and better because the hair thing so we can we can go deeper on this topic but it's just a, a suggestion now for for our audience for your audience and I hope we can experiment in your in your place this exactly. this is I absolutely want to do that. And I, I keep on going back to like, so we put the grounding in the house and you're you're overcoming an infrastructure of plastic with the grounding rods, the metal and everything else. I'm curious of how we can take that throughout our day. And that's something you and I were gonna have we're gonna have to talk about. But this I think is really important to integrate those things together. Um, but you know, having it in your house and stabilizing your body is really, really important. I love that. Yeah, it's there are there are some gadgets that uh, we show you <laughs> we can use in our house if mm -hmm. the grounding is well uh, properly. This is the first yeah. condition. And then you can you can bring uh, this earth energy to your body, and obtain all the effects that have been uh, shown there. Huh? So we beautiful. have gadgets for that. <laughs> no, it's really it's really beautiful because as you start to do this and you start to realize these little things, like just as just as an example, it doesn't happen overnight. Anything that's natural, you don't notice like these things in your body. But after a little bit of time, you look back and you're like wow, my body feels different, completely different. I mean, I know moving from the food of the United States to the food of Italy, you know, this was a major change. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, my body feels different. Everything feels different. And I'm like, that's a very positive thing, but it doesn't happen overnight. And that's, I think, one of the things that's a challenge as you do anything, both health-wise and then for, as you alter the way you do something, you don't see it immediately, but boy, you do really see it. And you're like, that's interesting. Really, really good, good result. So I'm very happy the project is moving forward and uh, we see step-by-step step that things are going yeah. on compliments I'm, I'm so happy that i'm part of the project and partnership with anteros you kiara all the team so thank you lisa for this experience it's a very oh. very very huge experience it is a mutual gratitude and it's really exciting andrea thank you for being part of it and coming there and spending the time with us to bring this land i think as you've come down here you realize the beauty of Puglia. But what's happened to Puglia is that there has been, she's been neglected, especially in Salento, where I am, where they have not done the natural things um, to bring the soil back, to, to cleanse the, the water. But she is such a natural beauty. And what a, what a unique opportunity to bring a villa and a piece of land back to her roots and bring her back to life. And I couldn't have a better partner than you. So thank you very much. And it's exciting to do. Yeah. <laughs> so just to let everybody know our next, um, the next phase of this project is going to be in early March and we'll be doing the, pro uh, the rest of the project as Andrea has outlined. We'll continue to give updates and we'll try to do a live stream of some element of the project itself, but um, these we're integrating all of these things into the project from the home for the grounding to restoring of the, the natural soil and to taking now the water, which we know is really critical and bringing her back into energetic life so she can energize and nourish the land, the home and all the people around it. So exciting, <laughs> exciting Absolute. times. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. This is Lisa from Adventures in Agriculture saying thank you and let us know your comments. And if you want to get involved more and in what we're doing, just come back here and, and reach Andrea through her links below. But thanks very much. Andrea, have a great day. Ciao. You too. Ciao. Thank you.